Okay, so um, what I'm going to talk about this morning um, is a bit about uh, enthalpy changes of solution. So this comes into um, F335 and the oceans unit. Um, there's a lot of discussion in that unit about um, what substances are dissolved in um, the oceans, why certain substances dissolve, other substances don't dissolve, and the interaction between um, the solute and the solvent. So what we're going to do is just a quick run through of some of the energetics that you have to be able to do. So I'm just going to turn on screen sharing and uh, that one. And here we go. So we're going to talk about enthalpy changes of solution. So we're going to really just look at the interaction between three enthalpy changes here. That's fine here. So first of all, the enthalpy change of solution, um, delta H sol. Um, if we take a nice simple ionic compound, sodium chloride solid, and we dissolve it in water at standard conditions and dissolve a mole of it to make a one molar solution, that's what we mean by the um, standard enthalpy of solution of sodium chloride. So it's the enthalpy change associated with the stuff dissolving. Um, so there's really two facets of this dissolving. One of them is being able to break apart the sodium and the chloride ions so that that attraction has to be overcome. And secondly, once you form these aqueous ions, what's happening is that you're getting a solvation shell forming. So if I just do one for sodium, water, of course, is a polar molecule. So the water molecules will form a solvation shell around the ions. And this is a bond forming process, so this is exothermic, so this liberates energy. So we've got the bond breaking process of moving the ions apart, but that's offset by the bond formation that you get in the ionic, in the solvation shell. So that's delta negative and that's delta positive, delta positive. So you get this attraction here. So this is a, an ion dipole attraction. Now how big that ion dipole attraction is will depend upon the charge on the ion, the size of the ion, so collectively what we call charge density. So if you've got a very positive ion, um, you've got more positive charge in the same space, so it's going to attract the ions more strongly. If you've got a smaller ion, even if it's got the same charge, so a lithium ion has a higher charge density than the sodium ion because it's a smaller ion, so it's a smaller point of positive charge, it's going to have a greater attraction to these negative um, oxygens. So that's one enthalpy change we need to think about. Um, so the one that describes the strength of the attraction between the, the ions is what we call a lattice enthalpy, delta H L E. So that's a lattice enthalpy, and that is described as the energy change when you take gaseous ions and you make a mole of the solid ionic compound. Okay, so here we've got a bond making process. We're taking gaseous ions and putting them together to make a, a solid ionic compound. So this is always exothermic, whoops, uh, delta H equals a negative value, okay, it's always exothermic, it's always describing a bond making process. And again, the things which are going to make a difference to the size of the lattice enthalpy will be the size of the ions. So it's size of the ions dependent. So if you've got small ions, you'll increase the size of the lattice and they become more exothermic. Um, it's also dependent on the charge of the ions. So if the charge is bigger, then the lattice enthalpy, again, will be more exothermic. So if you take something like magnesium oxide with a 2 plus and a 2 minus um, charge respectively on the magnesium and the oxygen, then that's um, got quite a high 
lattice enthalpy by high I mean exothermic and when you're talking about this in a, an exam you talk about something being more exothermic okay because you've got positive and negative enthalpy change you've got to be very clear what you're talking about you talk about something being more endothermic or more exothermic and the other thing it does depend on is the relative size of the ions Okay, so if you've got two ions which are very different in their size, that means you're going to have to space these ions a little bit further apart to avoid um, big ions coming too close together. Whereas if you've got ions which are similar in size, you can pack them more closely. So the relative size of the ions is important, and, and, and this is a, in the factor in trying to explain things like the solubility patterns that you've got in group two. Um, compounds. It's the relative size of the ions which is important. Things like the lattice enthalpy don't decrease as much as you might expect them to decrease. They will decrease down a group because the ions are getting bigger. So this size of ions is a very important factor. But because the ion size is becoming increasingly similar to that of, say, a sulfate ion, um, then the lattice enthalpy doesn't become uh, less exothermic, perhaps as much as you would expect and therefore um, the hydration enthalpies um, uh, the, the hydration enthalpies of the ions do drop off but the lattice enthalpy doesn't and therefore they become progressively more insoluble so that brings us on to the other enthalpy change you need to consider which is delta H hydration so this is the enthalpy change when you take a gaseous ion, say so a sodium ion, and turn it into an aqueous ion. Standard conditions, that's meant to be aqueous there. Okay, so we're going from a gaseous to an aqueous ion. Um, and that's this factor here. This is a bond making process. We're forming uh, this ion dipole interaction between um, ions and uh, water molecules. If it was a negatively charged ion, the water molecules would be the other way around. The positive hydrogens would be attracted to the, uh, the negative chloride in this case. So this is also always negative. So it's going to be an exothermic process. And it's again down to these things, size of the ion and the charge on the ion. So collectively we can consider those to be the charge density. So very positive ions um, will have a higher charge density, very small ions will have a high charge density. Combine the two together and you get extremely high charge density. So for example, a magnesium 2 plus ion has a very high charge density, aluminium 3 plus even higher. Um, and remember when you remove an electron from a, an atom, the, it shrinks because you've got the same number of protons there, but fewer electrons. So those fewer electrons are pulled in more tightly. So we look at the relationship between these three enthalpy changes. So let's just have a straight line. I'm going to have an energy level there. I'm going to have an energy level here. And let's do the case of sodium chloride. This is going to be slightly exaggerated, but it doesn't matter. I'll have an energy level there. Okay, let's go back to text. So we start with NaCl solid, so that's our solid material. Up here the most energetic version is the gaseous ions, fairly obviously. Gaseous ions are going to have a, a lot of energy whizzing around. Okay, And going down here we've got delta HLE, lattice enthalpy. Okay, So the lattice enthalpy is exothermic, it's defined as going that way. And coming down here we've got the delta H hydration of the chloride ion added on to the delta H hydration of the sodium ion and that gives us the aqueous sodium ion and the aqueous chloride ion. Now if you were to look up these values and bung them in you'll actually find that the difference between there is about one kilojoule per mole. 
it's not very much. Um, the entropy of solution, which is what the difference there is, is around about plus 1 kJ per mole of sodium chloride. It's very slightly endothermic, almost nothing at all. Just change color. To do the calculation, to find out delta H sol or any of the others for that matter of you, is simply a, an application of Hess's law. You're going around that way rather than directly. So the overall length of the change is independent of the route taken. So delta H solution is equal to, we're going down here, so it's the enthalpy change of hydration of the chloride ion plus the enthalpy change of hydration of the sodium ion minus, because we're going in the opposite direction of the lattice enthalpy, minus the lattice enthalpy. So the lattice enthalpy is counting against the thing dissolving, whereas the hydration enthalpy is accounting for the thing dissolving. So if you want something to be very soluble, you want an exothermic enthalpy of solution. So the lattice enthalpy needs to be um, small in comparison to the hydration enthalpies. In terms of sort of discussing why something dissolves, this is part of the picture because of course why something dissolves or indeed anything else happens is down to entropy. I've got to remember that the total entropy equals the entropy of the system plus the entropy of the surroundings. And the entropy of the surroundings is dependent on delta H and it's equal to minus delta H by T. So delta S total can be expressed as being equal to delta S system minus delta H by T. So if you've got an enthalpy of solution which is endothermic, this term here is going to be negative and that's going to count against an increase in the total entropy and the entropy has to go up if the process is going to be spontaneous, it's going to dissolve. So if you've got an endothermic enthalpy of solution then um, there's a chance that your material is not going to dissolve and that chance is also temperature dependent. So basically an endothermic delta H means it might not dissolve But if you were to increase the temperature, that would make this term smaller. So if you increase the temperature, it means it's going to be more likely to dissolve. Simply because this term becomes less and less relevant as you increase the temperature. However, if you've got a very, very large um, endothermic enthalpy of solution, then you're going to struggle to get it to dissolve because of course there is a limit to if you're using water what T can be of course before the liquid starts to boil and basically it just won't dissolve. Um, it also depends upon this term here which is the entropy change of the system which is down to how the entropy is changing and when you dissolve something you'll typically get an entropy increase which is why sodium chloride dissolves because this term is um, very positive despite the fact that that's a very, very small negative value because we're going from a regular ionic crystalline structure which has got a very low entropy to a much more disordered aqueous solution which has got a very much higher entropy. So this delta S system is going to be quite positive. So this here is a calculation that you might have to do and this is an energy level diagram that you might have to draw and again this is a, a expressions that you are expected to know and be able to put numbers into. Okay I'm uh, going to stop there and uh, hopefully somebody will find that useful.